just <coughs> we'll just chat and see okay, what happens. Okay, cool. You want me to talk closer? That? Okay. Yeah, get it right up. Okay. Right up in Hello. your face uncomfortably. <laughs> All right. Welcome to episode nine of the Inside MNU Athletics podcast. I'm Sports Information Director Chad Jenkins, joined alongside Kalina Penna. I'll just let you say your name because I just totally screwed that up. <laughs> What's your? What, how do you say your name? Like full name or just? What people call you, first of all, and then we'll okay. get into that too. People call me KP. Right. Um, my first name is Kalena Onalani Pana. Okay. But then also Kalena is what I go by. Kalena. Yeah. And it's Pana or Pana? Pana. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what's your, what's your, like your middle name? Is that crazy I don't have too? one. Oh, really? Yeah. They kind of said like your first name's long enough. So like just keep it there. <laughs> and what is it? One more time. Let's hear that again. Kalena Onalani Pana. Kalena Onalani. Kalena Onalani. Yeah. Okay. That was good. Well, sometimes I have to do Hawaiian names or South Pacific names for other teams too. Games. And it basically the rule is make sure every letter is represented. <laughs> is that how that works? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, so, head cheer coach, by the way. So I d failed to mention that. Um, so, tell us about the difference this year. You have cranked up our numbers for cheer. Mm -hmm. And uh, go ahead and talk about the difference between like the first couple years you were head coach. Okay. What, year, what year is this for you? Year three. Okay. Isn't that so, crazy? Yeah. So, first couple years compared to this. Okay. Um, I would say, I think my first year, there's about... 16 to 18 on a team and now we have about 34 <laughs> nice. um so we've just been recruiting a lot we really want to expand the cheer program um I, my goal is to do a sideline only and a competition only team um with that but yeah it's been nice it's it's honestly <clears throat> a lot more fun with more people right so how did you get to mnu in the first place okay do you want the long story or the yes short story? this is why we're here okay um so Originally, I wanted to go to Point Loma Nazarene okay. University in San Diego, and that's kind of where everyone in my church goes to. That's our MNU in Hawaii. So I applied here because my brother and, do you remember Pace? He yes. played football here. They were coming here to play football. And what was his full name? Because it wasn't just Lafa Pace. Lafaele Pasalio. Right. That's right. But they call him Pace. <laughs> Pace Pana? Uh, Pasalio. Okay. And then my brother was Sai. Sai Pana. Pana. I remember mm -hmm. him. Okay. I and didn't know the. I didn't know Pace was your brother. I guess. Uh, he kind of is. He. Um, I grew up with their family. Okay. His parents are like mine. Yeah. So him and my brother were coming here to play football. So I applied here, and I applied for Point Loma with Pace's sister, because we we're close. Him and my brother were close. So I was like, okay, let's do it. And so we both applied. I got accepted to MNU first. Didn't think about cheering. I cheered my entire life since right. like seven, but I just kind of wanted to give my body a break a little bit. So I applied to Point Loma, whatever, I'm waiting for the mail piece. And so I go downstairs and I check the mail. I open it, I didn't get accepted. So I was pretty devastated, like I was boohoo crying, <laughs> right? And um, I swear this is like a movie. So just to kind of like, just take a walk, my car was parked at their house. <laughs> okay. And I would say it's maybe a mile away. I walked to their house to get my car, just to bring it back, just for the walk. And I kid you not, like when I got to my car, she got her letter the same time. <laughs> and as they opened it, they're cheering. And I know what they're cheering about because, right. you know, we, I, got, I just got my letter. <laughs> She's been accepted. And they hear me outside in the garage and they come running out. They're like, did you get accepted too? <laughs> and I'm over there crying. And I'm like, no, I didn't. And they're like, it was just so it was just so crazy because like you know the to total different yes, yes. reactions and whatnot and they just went from like celebrating to just like comforting me which is like so right. nice of them right right um and then i was crying to them i was like but then you feel bad since you're yeah i didn't want to away from their joy right i didn't want to yeah. take away from their joy and i'm like crying because i'm like i'm gonna go to kansas with the boys like <laughs> i'm gonna freeze and stuff and so that whole day i literally was crying because I've wanted to go to Point Loma forever, right. you know, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go to Kansas. I'm going to do the Kansas thing. And and what did you know about Kansas or the school at that um, point? Nothing, really. Um, had well, your brother gone yet? Had, has no. He, was he ahead of you or the same age or what? Uh, he's two years older than me, but then we were the same grade level. Okay. Um, but he was excited to come, but so... Rick Powers was the um, pastor at yes. 
I remember that name. Um, he's our superintendent. Okay. And like our my youth pastor married his daughter, so there was that MNU connection. Okay. So I didn't know nothing about Kansas. I thought I didn't know how to uh, pronounce Olathe. I thought it was Olathe. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so so that was that. Um, and the very next day, and I kid you not, it's such a god thing. The very next day, I get an email from Brittany Keller. Yeah. And Brittany Keller was the cheer coach at the time, and uh, the football coach was saying, like, oh, I have a boy from Hawaii coming in. Um, his sister's a cheerleader. Look into it. And she basically stalked my Facebook is what she said. <laughs> and that's how I got, re- like, that's how I started cheering here, too. Okay. So it's kind of crazy, like, it's the very next day. So what did you think of Kansas? What did you think, did you know about snow? Had you been, I guess, had you been other places before? Um, I've been to other places. I've been to Alaska in the summer. Okay. So there was a little bit of snow, but nothing crazy. Right. Um, my first season as a cheerleader, it snowed at one of the games. <laughs> and I and a girl forgot their jacket. So oh you know what happens gosh. when someone forgets their jacket. Nobody can wear their jackets. And I looked miserable <laughs> at that game. And I was there like this entire time. I was like, yeah. Brittany, I can't. I <laughs> like Brittany. I'm crying in, in, on the inside. Um, I was not expecting the weather. Um, because what is it? What is it really like in Hawaii? What is the weather is flawless all like all year round, or is there even some sort of rainy season or cold? I don't know anything about it. Yeah, um, I live on the windward side, so the windward side is more mountains and the water. It rains a lot. Okay, it's so green on our side, so it makes sense that it rains a lot. Um, it is sunny, but we do get a lot of rain, but But not but never cold. No, under. I would say under 70 degrees is cold. Okay. So when we're here at like 20 degrees, you know, it's like a big difference, to be honest. <laughs> sure. Um, we had a bunch of, I went to Bethel, Indiana, and we had a Hawaii contingent at Bethel. There was like 10 of them. Oh, wow. And they would, like during the snow, and that's in Indiana, you get lake effect snow on the other side of Lake Michigan. So mm-hmm. it is, I think we average around 20 inches a year here. We would average 80 in Indiana. Oh, my gosh. So... They would come out, and they were fascinated by it. They would still wear their sandals and their Hawaiian shirts and oh their shorts God. and walk to class and that and just kind of be like, they they seemed to love it. But that was that was my only experience with Hawaiians <laughs> <laughs> before now. So Yeah, no, I couldn't. Mm-mm. What is it like now with COVID there? I have heard that oh, mm-hmm. it, it – did it take a while to get there, and then once it got there – it hit hard and then tourism is suffering and all that. Mm-hmm. What's it like in Hawaii right now? Um, right now, I think they're starting to reopen the state for the second time. Okay. Um, my mom's a nurse, so she has been kind of telling us how her experience as a nurse. You know, um, the beginning of quarantine, I would say they weren't really hit as hard. They were maybe 500 cases, you know, and um, they weren't as bad. And it started to pick up and she was kind of like, you know, we're running out of, you know, protective gear. Right. You know, they're telling, they're being told to wear this mask for like a week, you know, and the you know, same mask, the same mask. Yeah. And I FaceTime her and she has like three masks on, <laughs> like glasses and a shield and stuff. And like she works labor and delivery. So, you know, they're very right. extra protective, you know, because mm-hmm. these little ones. Um, but yeah, tourism, it they were hit hard, like. Hawaii is that state that everyone wants to go visit. And that's basically you know? the economy, right? Everything. If you don't have tourism, you're you're done. Yeah. So um, so a lot of people were worried about that because right. we can't afford, you right. know, we get everything shipped to us. You know, the only thing we really grow is pineapples. So I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so everything gets shipped to us. So everyone was just very nervous. And, you know, like there's no money coming in. How are we supposed to produce this out, you know? Right. Um, but I think everything is getting a little better. It, it was at the point that... Um, They had a curfew statewide, you know, um, only one person could be by themselves, like at the beach, and then they Mm -hmm. shut down the beaches and stuff, but I know they, I was supposed to go home in September, but because of COVID, we kind of canceled it. Now, tell me about the history of Hawaii. I have heard that, you know, your generation is, is, let me start over. (laughs) I have heard that the previous gen like your grandmother or something Mm -hmm. when hawaii became a state in 49 is that accurate i think think that's right yeah like not everybody was thrilled with that Mm -hmm. i've only heard that recently growing up 
I was born in 1977, so growing up, Hawaii has always been part of the U.S., mm -hmm. no big deal, don't know the history of it, just, hey, it became a state, everybody must have loved that. Mm -hmm. But back in 1949, not everybody was on board with that. Is there is there any truth to that? Do you know? Yeah. Tell me about that. For sure. Um, so growing up in Hawaii, we learn a lot about our history. You right. know, um, and it was a monarchy before that, right? Yes, the um, King Kamehameha the Great, right, was the first, and then we had a second and a third and whatnot. And our last uh, monarchy was Queen Liliuokalani, <laughs> and um, basically, when Hawaii became a state, people forget to say that we weren't willing to become a state; we were overthrown. Yeah, that's kind you of the, the story that I heard. I hadn't heard that. Yeah, so when they came in. Um, when the missionaries came in, everything kind of like changed up a little bit. And um, basically, it came to the point where our queen was, you know, enslaved in her own palace, you know, <laughs> right. and and basically overthrown her. And there is like people to this day, you'll talk to like my grandma, you know, and about that those times. Then she would just be like, you know, it's just it's insane how everything happened. But. I know a lot of people that want to go back to it, to be honest. Yeah? Mm hmm That's the thing. I had heard that the older generation who were around for it, mm -hmm. they don't like Europeans, and there's there's this negative connotation of these people conquered us, Yeah. and now we're supposed to be happy to be in their country, be part of their country. Yeah. And I just hadn't heard anything like that before, so that was surprising to hear. Yeah. I figured, like, oh, of course, a tiny island way out in the middle of nowhere would love to be part of the United States, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, no, not necessarily. Yeah. But I hadn't. <clears throat> yeah, that was interesting to hear that. There's a song called um, Hawaii 70, uh, 78, and it's a song basically talking about the old Hawaii days and, you know, if our ancestors were here, how would they, like, how would they react to it, you right. know? They see more roads than green, you know, and <laughs> right. stuff like that. But, yeah, it's a cool song. Well, <laughs> It seems like it's kind of sad, though, too. It kind of is sad. Yeah, yeah, it kind of is sad, for sure. So does the generations per, uh, since then, like your generation, mm -hmm. is it like this is what it is, it's no big deal, we don't care, we like to be part of the U.S.? Or is it like <clears throat> some people want to still break away, even in, even people your age? Yeah. Um, I think especially with COVID yeah. happening, a lot of people were saying – Let's just go back. Let's just be on our own. Let's just take care of our own, you know, because they were against, even though tourism was like our main <clears throat> source of income, um, they were kind of against like tourists coming back because they didn't right. want to risk um, our natives there. You know, we right. don't have as many hospitals, you know, right. as people would have up here and stuff. So uh, I've, I've been hearing a lot of people saying they would rather go back That's like funny. recently, like my age. Right. I don't know. How would that even work? Like, I don't know. People talk about secession like texas talks about it or california yeah. or whatever hawaii i don't hear about much that would be interesting yeah. all right well that took a weird turn yeah no, sorry um, <laughs> no, that was my question um who's your biggest influence as a cheerleader when you were growing up or as an athlete what who who kind of took you alongside and and made you what you were i guess um, I would say a mixture of people. I would say my mom and her sisters. Okay. They're very known um, in my hometown for softball, and they're all like a year apart. So it was either they were really good. Okay. So it's kind of in um, like they won the only state championship for softball in my high school, and my aunt's um, names are in our Hall of Fame. Oh, my nice. mom's in the Hall of Fame at her high school and stuff. So just the way that they their their work ethic you right. know like they were good and like they weren't good because they were lazy you know and they were <laughs> right. good because they worked for it and stuff and my mom was a softball coach and she trained my cousin from like t-ball until she got like a full ride at university of hawaii wow so so that's that kind of thing and then my brother my brother side i would say and what about as a coach who who uh did you always know you wanted to become a coach how did that process happen and who influenced you there? For sure. Um, I My first coaching job would be uh, summer camps. Okay. Um, I think my junior year here. And that's when I kind of like fell in love with coaching. Um, it's so cliche to say it, but you teach someone a skill and they hit it and like they get super happy about it, you know, and it's like a right. good feeling, you know, sure. because what they um, accomplished. Um, and then now coaching now, um, coach 
uh, Theotis Brown yeah. was a big mentor for me, <clears throat> to be honest, especially during my first year because I was learning my first year here, yeah. just learning so much. And he really took the time to break everything down to me. You know, and he explained that one thing he likes to say is that um, as coaches, we have many hats. Yeah. You know, we wear a coaching hat. You know, sometimes we wear our counselor hat, yeah. you know, our parent hat. Parent and, mm-hmm. and disciplinarian and, yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> how do you get people to, you, you've increased this cheer program mm-hmm. by double. What is your recruiting pitch? How do you get people to come here? Um, that's hard. I think that's a hard question because I feel like my pitching or uh, my, uh, my pitch is like different, you know? Right. That's it's what all the coaches have said. They, it yeah. depends on the kid. It depends. I mostly talk about our team and and how they are. Like our team, it's like there's no team like ours. To be honest, we have a bunch of goofballs, right. but they work hard, you know. And um, it's very rare to find no drama on a cheer team. Like that's a stereotype, right? Cheerleaders are drama. Sure. That's a stereotype. And it's like I'm lucky to say, it, knock on wood, <laughs> we don't have drama just because they do get along. You Good. know, the closer they are, the better we're going to be. But that's great. Yeah. Um, talk about your faith background. You said you grew up in Hawaii, going to that mm-hmm. church that had a connection to MNU. What was your faith background? And and tie that into <clears throat> the missionaries that came to Hawaii originally. Was that okay? Was that a positive thing? Even though it kind of changed the country and all that. Talk mm-hmm. about that. Um, I grew up. In church, um, my parents were very involved, um, and I was at Sunday school, you know, right. Wednesday Bible studies, you know, and stuff like that. Um, we were just Christian, but then as I got older, I went to uh, Windward Nazarene Academy, <laughs> which is um, all the Nazarene churches back home have a school attached to them. Um, so I went there, and that's when I got started uh, attending a Nazarene church, so since like third grade. Okay. So that's how I kind of... Um, figured out about Point Loma and MNU and whatnot, but, um, and I started becoming a youth leader for the junior high there once I got older and high school, once I got even older, and then, um, yeah. Okay. Point Loma, by the way. Mm-hmm. I went there. You went there? I didn't go there. Oh. I have been there. Well, I was in a, a volunteer assistant baseball coach at the Air Force Academy. Oh, wow. And we played Point Loma one year. Even though they were NAIA at the time, we were Division One, and so we go to Point Loma, and the baseball field is on the edge of a cliff, yeah, overlooking the ocean, and it was like this is the coolest baseball stadium I've ever been to, and they kicked our butts, like destroyed us. Now we were awful that year, however, but we, I mean, we had a guy hit two home runs on our team. And it seemed like if he just hit him a little further, that would have rolled into the Pacific into the Ocean. And it was, that was the coolest, yeah. I think the they coolest. have, like, their dorms on, like, the cliff, too. Yeah. To be honest. The whole, it's all over there on the coast. It's a cool place. Yeah. Um, all right. What was your family life like growing up? Okay. You, you talked about brothers and pseudo brothers. What was that <laughs> situation? For sure. Um, I grew up, my parents separated, I would say... Third, I would say third grade. Okay. So after they separated, I grew up with just my mom and my two brothers. Um, I don't know. Life has those difficulties right. growing up in like a single parent home for sure. Um, would I change it? No. Yeah. I feel like I learned a lot of stuff um, and made me who I am today and whatnot. Um, so I grew up with my mom. My two brothers, they're all, both older than me. Sai is two years older than me. And then my brother Ikaika is six years older than me. Okay. So we were never in the same school. <laughs> um, and then I would say Teroa, and P- who's Pace's sister, and Pace is like my, my extra siblings. Okay. And what were they, if you don't mind getting yeah. into that, who were they? Who were they? Who were they? Um, <laughs> we went to, it's crazy. So I knew Pace since third grade. Um, I went to Nazarene. They had, my mom was a teacher there at the time. They had summer school, you know. So uh-huh. she put us in summer school just to kind of keep us entertained. And Pace and his sister didn't go to that school, but their mom uh, taught there as well. But they get went there for summer school, so that's okay. how we met. Um, and then we just became friends ever since that. And then we were in the same youth group together, same um, middle school, same high school, and then yeah. So it's not like an adoption situation or anything. It's just super close people kind yeah. of a situation. Cool. Mm-hmm. I've got adoption in my family, so I was curious to no, hear for sure. about that. In, in Hawaii, we call it uh, Hanai. Like, that's my Hanai brother, okay. which Hanai kind of means, like, adopt. 
Oh, interesting. Um, I asked coaches about this, and mm-hmm. I get different answers about what do you do outside of coaching at MNU. Sometimes there isn't anything, but what, yeah, do, what do you sure. what do you have? Um, there is quite a big group of us from Hawaii that's still up here. So what we like to do is karaoke. <laughs> yeah. um, so we sing a lot. Um, is that a Hawaiian word? No, or is I it a Japanese so. word? I think it might be. I don't know. I don't <laughs> Go know. Ahead. Well, back home they they call it uh they don't pronounce it as karaoke though. They call it uh. Oh wait, let me practice in my head. <laughs> okay, it's been it, a minute. It sounds like karaoke. That's how they like they say okay. it. Okay, well, yeah, it sounds like a Hawaiian word. No, for sure. I don't know um, anything about it. So we do a lot of karaoke, um, a lot of family dinners and game nights for sure. Like we're about to have one on Sunday. Cool. Yeah. Um, I also asked the coaches all about this: the current social climate, and social unrest, and mm-hmm. and riots, and police brutality, and Black Lives Matter demonstrations. Mm-hmm. You've got a team that has people from all over the place, mm-hmm. and you come together and you've got it all figured out as a family, basically. Mm-hmm. Have there been any racial tensions on the cheer team? Do you guys do anything to combat that, like, progressively, like, or aggressively, I should say? Or is it just family cool and everyone's cool? How, how, how does How is that going on your team? I feel like everything... They all get along. I don't think there's any, like, racial tension at all. Um, when, like, the riots and, you know, all that was happening, I did make sure to check in on my minority athletes, you right. know. You never know what they're going through, you know, as a diverse coach. Right. Um, and where do you put yourself in that camp? Are you a minority coach because you're Hawaiian? Do you, I, do you I feel that? So. Yeah, I would think so. Um, I grew up different, you right, know, right. a different – uh, values, different um, experiences, you know, our culture is so different. Right. But I would, I would definitely sure. um, live with that. I did check in on my athletes, though. You know, it's, it's a tough time to live in, you know, and just to make sure they were okay, you know. And we had some good conversations. Like, you would never think, you know, like what, me and an athlete, we talked about it for like an hour, you yeah. know, and I it just opened my whole perspective, you know, just because you don't really know what they're – going through you know i don't have to worry about certain stuff that they worry about you right. know and stuff um definitely no racial tension though on the team everyone like knock on wood they get along yeah, that's <laughs> um what, yeah. that's what it seems like if yeah. you want if we want to fix the country just put everybody on a cheer team everyone's positive and <laughs> you know <laughs> encouraging each other let me coach your team bring them to mnu i'm yeah. just kidding <laughs> yeah we'll fix everything no for sure um so the NAIA recently made cheer a sport. Mm-hmm. So does does it does that um, end that debate? Have you heard that debate a lot? It's oh cheering a sport. Yes. And you get you get the most injuries first of all, the most head injuries. Yeah. And like major injuries, I should say. Mm-hmm. And then is it a sport? Is it not a sport? So the NAIA, you know, has officially declared cheer a sport, Dad. <laughs> so you know it's a sport it, yeah. <laughs> so uh what was that did you have to defend that all the time or oh what, is gosh. it just a silly conversation because what difference does it make you'd be surprised if i had a dollar right for each time i got <laughs> debated on like if cheers a sport i could pay off my school loans like <laughs> <laughs> it's it's been something that's um people only see sideline cheer they see us at the sideline of games you know but they really don't see the competitive side right um I was cheering at the time when the NAI uh, made it officially a sport, which is nice. Right. And I got to cheer at the first, like, uh, nationals as it as a sport. And it's kind of cool because they talked about it there. Just, you know, be proud of our sport. You know, like, look how far it came. You know, we're Mm -hmm. at the first nationals, you know, cheer national uh, championship for it and stuff. Um, It's definitely a sport. I would say look at the competitive side, you know. I like to reference whenever someone's like, is cheer sport? I'm like, okay, please watch uh, cheer on Netflix. Right. <laughs> that Navarro team, you know, um, is a great example of athletes, to yeah. be honest. And, I mean, it's it's the same as any other, you know, you, first of all, you have to define a sport. Mm-hmm. What is a sport? If, if it's defined by two teams competing against each other with defense mm-hmm. involved, then bowling or golf aren't sports. Yeah. So if those are sports, then – What's the difference? You're performing, and whoever does the best wins. Wins. So yeah. if that's considered a sport, then cheers a sport. Have you settled? Heard, have you heard of settled? It's over. <laughs> have you heard of stunt the sport? No. So it's a new cheer thing that's happening, and a lot of NAIA schools are 
um, going into it. And it's basically, you have 30 people on your team, like MBU just like added a team. Missouri Baptist. Yes, yeah. they added a stunt team and basically they are sent a specific stunts that they and skills they have to do. And they go up head to head against another team. Okay. And like, like whoever, dance-off? basically, <laughs> but so there's like, everyone's in jerseys, right? And if I'm the judges, they're facing me, they're doing the same thing at the same time and whoever executes it better I like this. I'd watch that. I want to do it. Yeah. I'm right. Todd, if you're watching it, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's really cool. And it's, and it just focuses on the tumbling aspect, the, and the stunning. And it's kind of like how they do gymnastics, right? They, yeah. You've got different, uh, skills that you need to perform and those have scales and whoever does yeah. that, you get a five or you get a four and it's all whatever. Yeah. It's really cool. Interesting. Well, we did the, uh, I'm sorry. We did the, uh, competition last year mm-hmm. here and streamed it. And everyone loved that as we had the cameras going and the interviews and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. How is that going to look this year with COVID? Do you know anything about that? You know, I think our goal, I just had a meeting with Kristen uh, last week about it. I think our goal is to proceed like last year with some changes, of course. Um, Some schools are doing just virtual competitions, which if we have to, at least we have that as a backup plan. Right. but I think we'll do face-to-face competitions because, I don't know, I think there's a different um, vibe to it, you know? Right. It's different from me performing in front of, like, a camera versus, like, you know, my um, my opponents are looking at me, you know, I right. can't mess up. It seems like the, the whole attitude in the gym would change and the whole yeah. attitude of the whole place. If yeah. You've got people, because the other teams, it seems like the other teams are actually – happy for your team when, yeah. when you hit a stunt and mm-hmm. people are like oh that was great good job there seems to be that spirit of almost not competition but like we're all in this together and if we do better that's great but they just hit a cool stunt and everyone cheers for it and it's yeah i, I cheers weird right it was almost moving <laughs> it was seriously it was almost moving to see that because if you've yeah. got a, a big dunk on the basketball team it's not like the other bench is going to be like oh sweet dunk you. dude yeah so yeah i i I enjoyed that part of it. I didn't think I would. It was mm-hmm. a long day of <laughs> it's cheer. It was a long day. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was a very long day, but it was cool to, to see that. Um, I would say, especially in our conference, our conference, we're so close. Yeah. Our cheer teams are so close, um, which I wish other teams got to see. You know, it's crazy. Like, we're competing against each other. Even Baker. Yeah, of course. <laughs> they, they're the main ones in front of us, right. and, like them and CMU. Um, yeah. yeah, I love the Baker cheer coach and uh, dance coach. Um, their dance coach helped me a lot to prepare for hosting too. Um, but yeah, like if we're performing, um, our conference would sit in front of the mat and just root us on, which, you know, like at the end of the day, yeah, are we competing against each other? But we just, we know how hard it is right. to do these skills and right. stuff and just seeing them accomplish it. And cool. there's no actual defense. So you may yeah. as well support them. Yeah. I think adding defense might be a, an interesting way to go. Yeah. Having their throw up, throw up, like have Jonas. <laughs> Run Jonas. out there and tackle somebody. <laughs> Could you imagine? We're gonna we're gonna have um, Lindy on on the sideline ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that'd be perfect. All right, um, that's it for me. Okay. I think we can wrap this up. Okay. Thanks for coming. Thank episode, you for having me. Episode nine, and keep an eye out for the cheer competition. I should yes. be on camera. Keep an eye out for the cheer competition. Uh, could be virtual. Could be together. Yeah. All right. Thank you.